To be sure you never miss a Tech Ninja video, tap on the bell icon right next to subscribe. So the iPhone XS Max and the Galaxy Note 9 are the biggest phones this year. And I don't mean in size, but I mean in height behind the phones. There's just something about a very, very big phone that turns heads and really brings out the best of manufacturers. But how does the iPhone XS Max compare to the Galaxy Note 9? Well, I'm Kevin the Tech Ninja and we're gonna find out. Hey guys, before I begin this video, make sure you hit subscribe to be notified when I make more great videos like this. So if you take both phones, they're very similar in size. The Note 9 has more of a squared off look to it, whereas the iPhone sort of has this curved finish to it. Now, both of the phones are made of mostly glass on the front and the back is with these metal edges. The Note 9 is a thicker phone, but it also has a lot more going with it. So it has this headphone jack and also the S Pen. The Note 9 also has some very interesting color combinations, including the metallic copper and this lavender purple, whereas the iPhone color is very similar to last year with the addition of a gold finish phone. But both phones do have the ability where you can add a dbrand skin to change the colors. And you can also stop the phone from getting smudges and add some grip to it if you decide to not go with the case. Hit the links down below to dbrand your device. Now Samsung does pride itself on not adopting the notch. There's even tons of commercials about it. The Note 9 is a 6.4 inch Super AMOLED display with 2K resolution and curved edges. I really like how it looks. I think Samsung makes the best looking phones and a lot of people agree with me on this. But the iPhone Max screen is equally up to it. It's even a bit bigger at 6.5 inches. It has a wide color gamut and it comes with 3D touch built into the screen. Whereas on the Note 9, you get 3D touch like features, but only on the home button. But the Note 9 also has additional screen tweaks where it allows you to change the color profile. You can go between different color modes and you can also use a slider to determine how, how warm or how cool the image is. So you can actually make the screen look exactly how you want it. The iPhone does have some screen options, but not in depth like it is on the Note. Some people don't like the curved edges, but I actually like it. I think it's more immersive when you're watching video. Now, speaking of immersion, I think the speakers just sound extremely good on the iPhone Max. I'm not sure how they're doing it. And I always thought the Note had good speakers until you put it next to an iPhone and then you realize, wow. Listen to this example. I'm sure the camera didn't do it much justice, but let me tell you in person, it's night and day. So in the hand, how are these phones different? Well, these phones are both premium looking and feeling too, and they're also somewhat rugged. I mean, they're made of glass, so if you drop it, they'll shatter, obviously, but they're IP68 water and dust resistant. So if you happen to drop your phone in water, get caught in the rain, that's fine. They can stay in the water up to two meters for 30 minutes. And to me, that's a pretty big deal, but that's just how it is in your hand. How do the phones perform? The Note 9 has the latest Qualcomm Snapdragon 845 octa-core processor, and it comes with six gigabytes of RAM. It's zippy and smooth, and the apps also stay in memory. Now, Samsung Experience Launcher have seen massive improvements, and it does now allow for deep customization. A lot of people say bad things about Samsung software, but I actually like it. I think they made enough changes for me to feel very comfortable with it, and they add a lot of cool software that I use on an everyday basis. The iPhone Max, on the other hand, comes with the world's first seven nanometer processor, and it's Apple A12 Bionic six core processor and four gigabytes of RAM. Now, in spite of the differences in specifications, the iPhone Max holds up equally well to the Note 9, and it offers a smoother and more fluid experience thanks to iOS 12. iOS 12 software update was huge. I think it was Apple's best upgrade, and everything is just more smooth now, and everything is just more clean now. Now, one thing I'm noticing a lot on this new iPhone is that the Face ID is much more faster. Uh, Samsung has the ability to get into the phone with your face. You look at the phone and it unlocks and it actually ends up being faster than the iPhone because with the iPhone, you do the face ID, you have to swipe up to actually get into the phone. Whereas on the Note, you just look at it and it gets you in your phone too. iOS 12 doesn't give you much more for customization, sort of gives you this vanilla looking OS. Whereas the Samsung Experience Launcher, tons of different icon packs and launcher and it's Android. So you can make it work the way you want it to work. You can make it fit the way you want to work which makes Android really good for people who like to tinker. 
And also where Samsung shines, especially on the Note 9, is the S Pen. Now for me, I'm not a heavy S Pen user, but for people who are the creative type or people who are always signing PDFs and things that require a pen or a pen makes it easier, the S Pen is a godsend. I will admit there has been situations where a PDF was sent to me and need to sign something, pulling the S Pen out and signing it myself without having to use the stamp with my signature was really nice and it gave it a kind of a custom feel. But all things you do with the S Pen, you could do with other apps too that doesn't have an S Pen. I guess what I'm getting at is having an S Pen is a nice to have, but it's not a need to have feature. But some of the software features that pops out when you pull the S Pen out, it seems like a lot of it could work without an S Pen, like Smart Select. You can highlight something on the screen and cut it out and do things with it and also make GIFs, but why do I need the S Pen to do that? I can just use my fingers. But where the S Pen does shine at is that it becomes a remote for the camera. So you pull the S Pen out, you go to your camera, you tap on the button and it takes the picture, which is nice. Or if you're doing a PowerPoint presentation, the S Pen becomes a nice remote. There's also additional hardware like DeX, which allows your phone to actually turn into a computer and a lot of other cool things too. So what I'm saying is the, the iPhone is a very, I would say a vanilla experience where you may have like window and window mode will probably be their best feature for the Max. Uh, you can do that on the Note too. But the Note is kind of a Swiss army knife with things. You can do a lot more on the Note. But I guess the question is, will you do these things that are a lot more? on the Note. I think when you go to camera, the iPhone nudges the Note 9, and I think it's night and day. With a dual 12 megapixel camera setup with an f1.8 and 2.4 aperture, the iPhone Max just is a very solid camera. It performs well in almost all conditions, and I think the front 7 megapixel camera has improved too. I just wish it was wider, kind of like how it is on Samsung. Now, speaking of Samsung, the Note 9 comes with a dual 12 megapixel setup as well with a variable aperture at f1.4 to 2.4, and it brings in the other camera at f2.4 aperture lens. For the Note 9, I think outdoor pictures are great. This dynamic range looks good and just the colors are just fantastic, but it doesn't look natural. And then when you go indoors, that's when things get pretty interesting. I think indoor photos and low light photos to me ends up looking a bit muddy. And when you switch to the front facing camera indoor, you end up getting very blurry images. While the iPhone does its best to keep images together, the new bigger sensor does a great job at doing that. Now both of these phones do have the 2X zoom and you don't see any type of degradation when it comes to quality of the image. The 2X zooms work as expected and works as advertised. So kudos to both of those companies getting that right. I think the Note 9's portrait mode is hit or miss too, which it does a pretty good job at grabbing the outline, but fine details like hairs and other things like that, it has the issue adjusting. While the iPhone, on the other hand, nails it for the most part, but you will see circumstances with fine hairs and details that it can't grab it. But overall, in my testing, I felt the iPhone's uh, live focus, if you will, or the, the blur effect after taking the picture portrait effect does a better job than Galaxy Note 9. Now for video, both can do 4K videos at 60 frames per second and both have OIS. The Note 9 can do slow motion video at 960 frames per second, but for you to make that video look good, you have to have a ton of light and it's very limited on how you can record it. You have to wait for something to appear in this little square or if you turn that off, it waits till it finds motion. It's not a consistent recording that you can just slow down. But the Note does have a standard slow-mo mode too. I think video quality on the Note is exceptional. I think the iPhone is right up there with it. And I think to me, that's pretty much a toss up of which one does video better. I guess to round it up, we're gonna talk about battery. Um, with my testing, I cannot get into battery with the iPhone just yet, but look for that in my full review coming up soon. With the Note, this is actually extremely great battery life, probably the best Android phone I've used when it comes to battery life. 4,000 milliamp battery, um, you get about a day and a half worth of battery life for me. You also have quick charging ability, which you just plug it into the wall. Um, it's, not the, it's not the newest quick charge, it's not fast as dash charge, but it's good enough for me. You plug it in for about an hour, you can get around 40 to 50% of battery, which I'm okay with. Now here's the crazy thing that people always do talk about, but I guess I will mention it. The iPhone has the ability to fast charge, but doesn't come with a fast charge cable in the box something you have to buy third party. If you have an iPad, you can use that cable and that brick and you'll get a faster charger, but the native brick that it comes with does not allow you to fast charge with it. Come on, Apple. 
And also on the box, the iPhone doesn't come with a dongle for your headphones. So if you, you wanna plug your headphones in, you can't, you actually have to buy a dongle or use a previous one that you already may have. Let's slide to the price and we're at the home stretch here, how much money you're actually gonna spend. Well, for starters, the base 128 gigabyte Note 9 comes in just under a grand. And this could be further expanded to 512 gigabyte with a micro SD card. The iPhone Max retails for $1099 for only the 64 gigabyte variant. So obviously for better value, the Note is gonna be a better valued phone because you get more memory and you can expand it too. But what price are you willing to pay for a Note? Or if you already have an iPhone, will you pay the quote unquote Apple tax to keep your iPhone? There is this whole thing about the ecosystem, which it's easier to go from Android to iOS, but if you go to iOS to Android, it's not quite easy. Apple does a great job at locking you into their ecosystem. And as a company, I think that's the goal. Anyways, guys, those were my thoughts of the iPhone versus the Note. Different categories, the strengths and weaknesses with both phones. So it just determines on what is best for you. I think the best all around phone for most people is gonna be the iPhone. But if you're a creator and you're someone on the go, on the move at all times, and just need to have the power of a computer in your hand, the power of an actual laptop in your hand, then the Note's the best choice. You can use a DeX attachment to turn it into a computer. You got the S Pen for writing things and taking notes and things that are easy to do with a stylus or a pen. I guess the best way of putting it is, are you consuming media or are you creating media? And I think the Note is the best phone for creating media. Anyways guys, Kevin the Tech Ninja here. If you're still watching this video, leave a comment and say banana ham sandwich and I may give you a little shout out. Anyways guys, talk to you later, peace.